Hey folks, today we are going to make the best chili that you've ever had from stuff that's just dumped out of a can. That's right, we're just going to dump a bunch of stuff out of a can, stir it up, cook it a little bit, and eat it. Now we're going to cook this in an Instapot. It's an electronic crock pot pressure cooker, everything in one. The price has really come down and it's an exceptional piece of equipment. If you don't already have one, I would encourage you to get one. I'll put an affiliate link in the description so that you see what Amazon has. Um, highly, highly recommend this product. Here's a look at the ingredients we're gonna need. Nothing complicated here. Chances are you have most, if not everything, already in your pantry. And of course it starts with a pound of ground beef. Onions, garlic, salt, oregano, pretty basic here. A bunch of spices and the cans of beans and tomatoes. First thing, we go ahead and dice up our onion. As for the origins of chili, I am really going to upset some Texans here. So, chili is synonymous with Texas, or chili con carne, or chili with beef. Uh, or meat, and they uh, really hate beans in it for some reason. I don't know why. But check this out. In the writings of the Franciscan friar Bernito de Sahugon, S-A-H-U-G-U-N, described a chili pepper seasoned stew being consumed in the Aztec capital in 1529. Those are the Aztecs. Chili pepper or chili. We consume it as a chili powder now, but originally it was actual chilies, which are native to uh, Central America. Chili peppered seasoned stew. Does not, not sound like chili. Does to me. Described in 1529. Sorry, Texans, you did not invent it. The Aztecs did. May have modified it, may have made it better, but it is definitely an Aztec food. Sorry about that. Now that I've lost all of our Texan subscribers, let's get back to our chili or how we chop onions. Notice how we're just dicing these. If you're new to cooking, I cannot emphasize this enough. Notice how my left hand fingers are curled back and it, the knife just glides down my knuckles. That's so our tips, the tips of our fingers are never in a position to get cut. If you just stick your fingers out, you're inevitably gonna cut your finger, tip it, it's uh, it'll happen so learn some good techniques and never give yourself an opportunity to cut your fingers next we're going to prepare our garlic so uh, just break off some garlic from the clove you can use a knife a board scraper spoon but just hit it with the palm of your hand and then just pull that paper stuff off Now we're going to saute our onions and garlic in our Instapot. Just go ahead and put in a couple of tablespoons full of olive oil and throw in your garlic and onions. The Instapot has a setting on it for saute. Uh, again, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting it. The price has come down drastically and it is so useful. So many dishes uh, worth every penny. Now, we've talked about this in other videos, that I like to use a garlic press instead of dicing the garlic with a knife. I can never dice it fine enough, and running it through a garlic press, it not only dices it, it crushes the garlic and releases a lot more of the garlic oils. I feel like you get a lot more flavor out of the diced garlic than you could ever do for something that's just diced up. They're really cheap. I bought this one at Ikea for maybe five bucks. So if you don't have one, definitely get you one. So good piece of equipment to have. Next comes our ground beef. This recipe calls for a pound like everything else, every other recipe. If you want to use a pound and a half, there is nothing wrong with having a little bit of extra meat in there. Next, we're going to dump everything in from a can. So that's a can of diced tomatoes, 
We're going to put in two cups of chicken broth. Small can of tomato paste. If you're new to this, uh, take off the bottom lid as well and just crush it, push it out. And then when you drop the lid, pick that out. A can of black beans drained and a can of kidney beans drained. And just give that a good stir. Now we're gonna add some spices. Let's grind in some fresh ground pepper. Please always grind your pepper. It releases a lot of the oils that have evaporated if you use the pre-ground stuff. Much better flavor. Next we're gonna add two tablespoons of chili powder and then we're gonna add a tablespoons of cumin, a tablespoon of oregano, Fresh would be nice if you had it. And then we're going to add a tablespoon, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of paprika. And just give that a good stir. Now let's put our pressure cooker lid on, hit the pressure cooker button, set it for 20 minutes, and then just walk away. It will heat up, it will kick on by itself, nothing else to do here. After the 20 minutes, go ahead and release the steam. Hit that valve with a knife or spoon. Not your finger because that is live steam and it will burn you. 20 minutes in the pressure cooker is equivalent to about an hour of simmering. While that's cooling down, let's go ahead and slice up some bread. I'm using a sourdough bread and some very large chunks. Even though we talked about this is not a technically a Texas dish, it's synonymous with Texas. So using some big chunks of bread here, that just seems appropriate. And we're going to spoon it out, and finally we get to eat it. I'm going to top it off with some sour cream, some freshly grated cheddar cheese. Uh, this recipe is super simple to make. Very, very basic ingredients. I hope you guys will try it. If you uh, like it, please hit like and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And uh, Texans, sorry about uh, the history there, but we love you anyway. And besides, you made Tex-Mex, so that's awesome. So congrats. Thanks, everybody.